Hi, I'm Randy Altman with Post Perspective. We're here at Seagraph 2019, and I've got G. Young and Don Fidrick from the Griffith Observatory. And they are in, how far along, I'll ask in a second, how far along you guys are into this process, but you're creating um, Signs of Life, which is going to be a 35-minute uh, experience. Is that how you would describe it? Can you tell everybody what it is? Sure. Signs of Life is a 35-minute planetarium show that takes place in the Samuel Ocean Planetarium at Griffith Observatory in Los Angeles. Uh, it takes place in a 76-foot immersive dome uh, that has a fixed um, spring line to it, so it's not a tilted dome. Uh, this can be uh, a great experience with uh, about 300 people uh, in 28.2 surround sound, 8K, 60 frames a second. That's pretty incredible. How, how do you prepare for something like that? I mean, gee, you come from a traditional film background. You worked on some really big visual effects films. Um, what, draw, what drew you to this project in particular? And it must have been a huge challenge. I think what drew me to this, um, this project was that it was very unique, it's very different. It doesn't uh, come along very often. Uh, a show like this, the last show, the current show that's there now, uh, Center of the Universe, is a production that was developed over 12 years ago and has been running for 12 years now. And what's great about it is the inspiration of a, pro a production like this to all the people that come and see it. Unlike uh, a lot of the, um, the Hollywood entertainment films I've worked in the past or commercials and videos, you know, there's a little bit more here that kind of grounds itself into the science and the, the reality of the science that made it really fascinating for me to be a part of. And Don, what about you? What's your background? My background is uh, as a stage manager and a producer, production manager. Um, I studied as an artist as well. Uh, so I've kind of touched a lot of different things, which really helps when you create a small team in a small studio so that you really know what your team is doing, how long it's going to take them, what you're really asking of them. Uh, so this project for me is also a dream project to put together my production management background. There's a live performer in the show. Every show at Griffith Observatory has a live presenter. So this theatrical aspect is there. And then my background as a CG um, artist and uh, producer, being able to put both of those together it's pretty cool. And it's the Griffith. It's the iconic Griffith sure, yeah. Observatory uh, of Los Angeles. So, and you don't get more like recognizable than that. So. It's true. Now, what's the, what is the story about? I'm sure there's a story as part of it. And then also you guys are challenged with walking the line between um, science and entertainment, keeping people com com you know, compelled to watch. So how do you go about doing that? You'll talk about the story and I'll sure. talk about the science uh, and art. The story is Science of Life. Uh, you might imagine it is about uh, life in the universe and uh, you know it's really about how life began in the universe um, uh, we do explore where we know life exists on here on earth uh, but we're all interested and uh, the, the world is interested in the possibility outside of our planet what else could be there but we need to look at uh, what we know about life so we know how to look for it. So we depend a lot on our um, uh, astronomical team at Griffith Observatory, our science advisors, JPL, NASA, uh, to uh, look at our artistic renderings of shots that we want to present in the show and then tell us if it's plausible or not, if we're you know accurate. Uh, we have two team members, uh, uh, Don Dixon is the art director, um, who has been with the observatory for many, many years, and uh, I like to call him an astronomical animator. Uh, he is a, a world-famous uh, illustrator uh, and, and self-taught CG artist, and he provides a lot of uh, the questions for visual effects uh, professionals who weren't in the astronomy uh, for a long time, and so we kind of, you know, Don, where should this be placed, or you know, where, where is this on the star field? Uh, in, in terms of the um, balance the line between art and science, what's unique about uh, our little studio here is that because we have um, talent that 
that has been um, brewed from the entertainment and CGI and visual effects industry, and you have the science minds that also have a very strong knack for developing in, in CG, um, but has a, they have a tremendous amount of knowledge when it comes to space and astronomy, coupled with the fact that we do have specialists out there that we work with that really are, are uh, experts in their science fields. Um, coming from uh, studios where I've worked with uh, great cinematographers and great directors, um, you know, J.J. Abrams and the, and the James Camerons and the Ang Lees of the world, it was, what made it unique was to be true to the science but try to infuse and try to, st it's, it's like almost a day, I wouldn't say it's a daily, but it's definitely throughout the course of the production has been kind of um, what we call little, little tiny knife fights between making the science accurate, but then pushing it in the envelope of the cinematic and aesthetic so that it can become something that's a little bit more what I think the general audience would ex assume it would look like. I call it the, the kind of the mental image of your, of your general audience. So there's a lot of like beautiful images out there and there's this notion of what's true color and that's always been a kind of a point of like, well, is it, what is the true color if you're looking at something with your naked eye? So a good example is if you're underwater in the deep, if you were looking at everything in the dark, in, in, underwater really deep, it'd be pitch black. So not very cinematic at all. So we kind of like- Cheap to render. It's very cheap but. to render, <laughs> but di difficult to make comments about. <laughs> so. Yeah. So you guys are dealing with a ton of data. Can you talk about your workflow a little bit, what you use to sort of make it all um, seamless? Yeah, so I, um, it is a lot of data. It's probably one of the scariest aspects of making this production. We're talking about 8K squared images in a fisheye lens render, and we're dealing with 60 frames a second, which then yields tremendously long shots. So it takes a lot of balance. In total, 120,000 frames. Large frames. Large yes. frames. Uh, rendered in uh, uh, floating point linear workflow. Um, so our images, our individual images, can be really large as well. So we're, we're incorporating a very uh, standard production pipeline that you would find in large studios, uh, doing it in a very compact studio with a very talented but and, and nimble team that we have. So how we do it is we, we try to mandate a lot of specific uh, um, uh, standards and procedures. So we're not rendering everything on ones. We're not putting everything at large resolutions on the farm and basically hogging all of it and not sharing. So there's a lot of that that has to happen. There's a lot of planning what that has to happen. What might be interesting for your viewers is uh, to show an image of our Dome Master. Uh, our Dome Master is a circular image, you know, so I think G may have mentioned that it's a square format, 80, 8192 by 8192. So this dome image uh, gets sliced into 24 channels and projected across six projectors in the Samuel Ocean Planetarium. Uh, uh, so it's an interesting format, especially for artists to have to visualize. Once uh, an artist puts a ca an animated camera move and then they see it in dailies in the mini dome for the first time, it is like, ooh, I didn't expect that to happen. Let's, let's go back and tweak it a little bit so I can share one of those. That would be fantastic. And before I let you guys go and wander about, um, so just some of the tools that you guys use that you wouldn't be able to do this without. Uh, I would say shotgun, definitely. Uh, Maya and Arnold, uh, Houdini and um, Mantra, uh, Speed Tree, ZBrush, of course, and um, yeah, we substance. Uh, we got to name them all. <laughs> oh yes, Nuke, definitely. Uh, there's more. <laughs> so uh, Yeti, we're embarking on the Yeti. It takes a lot. Uh, yes. And, and, and it's never, it's not boring. And everyone gets to learn every day something new, which is great about it. That's very cool. Well, guys, thank you so much for taking the time. It was really nice to, uh, I look forward. Oh, when, when can people see it? It's like a year out? May of 2020. Okay. May of 2020, so about this year, next time at SIGGRAPH. Fantastic. Is there a website people could go to to find out about it? Sure, um, GriffithObservatory.org. Um, that's the best place to go at this time. And then as we get closer, uh, we will uh, start a, a social media campaign where uh, we'll have images, video, uh, behind the scenes footage of what's happening in the team that we'll share with the audience. Fantastic. Thank you, thank you. Don G, thank you.